I'm Grace Torrey, and you're listening to That Girl, the podcast. Grab a beverage of choice and settle in, because the new episode is starting now. Hey, what's up, you guys? It's your girl, Grace Torrey, and I am back with a whole new podcast episode. In today's podcast episode, we have something very important to talk about. I honestly consider dropping this episode early simply because it's very important, urgent, and needs to be discussed immediately. However, I got really busy and didn't have time to edit it, so we're filming and editing it now. But if you are not aware, Speak Now Taylor's version dropped July 7th. It is now July 9th. That July 9th, the beauty of your heart. Yeah, anyone familiar? Yeah, a uh, pretty big deal here. I need to talk to you about it. You need to chat. I listened to the album and I have some thoughts. We're going to go through all the songs. I'm going to say my thoughts. I'm going to talk about general things and we're just going to talk. We're going to discuss Speak Now, Taylor's version. I didn't do this for any of the other versions, like the other Taylor's versions. I honestly can't remember if the podcast was a thing when the other Taylor Taylor's versions came out or not. It was when Midnight's came out and I definitely did a review for that, which you can watch looking at my older videos just you know type in that girl midnight's review and it'll pop up but i don't think the other taylor's versions were out so i'm really excited to finally talk to them about you or talk to you about them (laughs) words are hard if you are not the biggest taylor fan i'm sorry that i have been doing so much taylor content lately there's just a lot going on i love her she means a lot to me and that is why we are discussing her but i totally understand if this is not your vibe and i'm happy to you know, not be offended if you want to skip this episode. Totally fine. But there's going to be a lot of fun things I want to talk about. So if you're even minutely a little bit interested, stick around. So yeah, without further ado, let's just dive in. I have the whole soundtrack pulled up in front of me and we are going to chit chat. So starting off strong, we're going in order. Mine. Mine is the first song on Sparks Fly. Nope. Sparks fly. Um, speak now, and it is probably, arguably, the biggest song based off of like singles. When the album originally came out, I think mine is the biggest one, the most popular one. And honestly, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be completely real with you. I liked the original mine better. So the first reason is that her backup vocals in the new version were really loud and it was hard to focus on her. I think that was just like a production issue. I had a hard time focusing on her rather than the vocals. Not that that's necessarily an issue. I think that's the wrong word. I think it was a choice and it was intentionally done. But I just prefer it better when I hear her more and the vocals are a little bit more faint. Additionally, her voice just caught me off guard. I think that I liked it more as the as the album went on, but in this song specifically, the way that her voice was more mature, more smooth, more controlled, um, it caught me off guard and I liked the original where her voice was a little bit more younger, a little bit more country. It, it was just... I don't know. It was a little tame for me, I think. So I personally, while I love the song, and obviously I'm going to listen to Taylor's version because, you know, profits need to go to Taylor. I was like a little disappointed for that to be the first one and me be like, ah, this is okay. But, but it does get better. The next song is Sparks Fly. Sparks Fly is one of my favorites on this album, or it was when it first came out. I think it may have changed since I've gotten older and relate to different songs now, but Sparks Fly is just such a classic, and again, it was really good. It was really good, um, but I was still getting used to her voice a little bit, and she's not, she put more twang into her voice originally, whereas now it's a lot smoother, and it doesn't have as much of that country flair to it, so it was good, though. I definitely thought that the volume versus the added vocals and music and beats and all that good stuff was a little bit more equal and I really liked it. It was a bop either way. So we're going to move on to Back to December. Back to December was I think on the same level as the original Back to December. The thing about this song is it's really hard to beat. Like the original is so hard to beat and I think that this one was a good equal to it. 
she just sounds so much more mature and and i want to add the emotion was in the original more she doesn't have as much emotion in taylor's version and i think that that's probably because it was over 10 years ago and she's very removed from the situations whereas they were a lot more raw when she first recorded it so that may be why but i just felt like this album had so much emotion in it originally and the emotion wasn't there as much in this album it was a more mature step back and record less involved more professional than the original and in some ways that worked in, to her benefit and in some ways i was like kind of upset because I really related to the original song and I liked the emotion in it because it felt made me feel like I was like not alone. So it's not a bad thing, it's not a good thing, it's just something that I definitely noticed. But Back to December was a good equal to the original. Speak Now. She did, she sang it a little differently. She didn't, it's just like there's more control to her voice. So I don't even know how to explain it. She just like didn't take as many risks I feel like I really liked the speak now new version like I, I don't want it to sound like I don't this version of this song I really really did like and I think I may have liked it more because of the control in her voice I don't know how to explain it it's like when you sing you can take it to a certain point before like your voice cracks or whatever I'm not a professional in any way so this is the way I explain it as someone who has just like like not like seen it and doesn't know what any of it means and felt it like I don't know I could be just like talking nonsense but as a, a consumer a fan whatever I've noticed that when you sing your voice can go to a certain point before it like cracks or breaks or whatever and then it doesn't sound good anymore and she has way more control over her voice so she you can kind of just tell where she takes it to that point and then like stops whereas with speak now is a little bit rougher like the first time around, not Taylor's version. And I noticed that in Speak Now, the song more, but she was able to do a lot more with her voice in this one versus the original. So I appreciated it. Shifting gears, we have something to discuss. And that something is Dear John. So good, so good. I think that the emotion was definitely in the original more. However, she did a good job of bringing it. She brought it for me. Dear John is like, it just gives you chills because she like goes there. Like she leaves no crumbs. And I think for me, there was a lot of anticipation for Dear John. I think for everyone there was because of All Too Well and how she came out with the 10 minute version. So because of how All Too Well had like this literally huge, huge, huge impact. Everyone was kind of saying, what is Dear John going to do? So there was a huge hype to live up to and while she didn't do any crazy changes like add a 10 minute version or anything she did do a lot with Taylor Lochner which we'll get to she still brought it and the only reason I would say that Dear John this version is equal to the original is because she had such 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 a huge expectation to live up to originally because that song is so good like it's not every day you listen to a song and it gives you chills and just leaves you emotionally wrecked and Dear John does that. So the fact that the second one was able to do that as well, it's definitely equal if not better. But I just have a hard time saying it's better because the original has my heart. It's so good. Next is Mean. Mean is very important to me. Mean is very, very country. Her voice is very, very country and has that like country aspect to it and she really performs mean with that and it definitely was missing that in the Taylor's version and there's nothing wrong with that. I think that in a way I appreciate it because I am almost more comfortable with her mature voice now because all of her newer albums have a more mature voice and she's done Taylor's version for two albums now now three if you add Speak Now into. So Fearless, Red, and Speak Now are all with her mature voice. So when I hear her older voice, it almost catches me off guard. So when I hear her sing Mean in her mature voice, it's more comforting because Mean is a very important song to me. I remember listening to it when I was like bullied in like middle school and thinking 
just like singing along and it putting me in a much better mood and thinking like that's gonna be me one day and it was me one day you know mic drop so i just love mean and the fact that i get to sing along to it with not only little taylor but big taylor as well is really exciting to me and i think that that makes mean taylor's version so much more precious and so important and that's why i think it's better than the original However, the little country Taylor is such a vibe in the original, so I think both are just like good in their own ways. They're really great in their own ways. The story of us, the story of us, I didn't see as being a very country song, so I think that, like, I don't know, this whole album kind of confused me because it has a country vibe, it has a pop vibe, but it also has a little bit of like a rock or punk vibe. Speak now was the punk the pop punk album that almost was i feel like and so the story of us kind of goes into that this i feel like at this point in the album we kind of shift to more poppy songs and the story of us is one of them i love it i don't think it has a lot of a country influence in it maybe you do that's cool i could be talking completely out of nowhere right now and you don't have to agree with me but because of that, I really liked the new version of the story of us because again, I'm more comfortable with like her more mature voice and the way that she was able to control it, like her voice in different ways and just add her own style, loved it. Another one, and I think all the girlies are talking about this for the same reason, but Never Grow Up. It's kind of crazy because when Never Grow Up first came out, I used to think about like my little brother because he's four years younger than me and i feel like when she sings it she's talking about her younger brother maybe she's not but that's the way i portrayed it when i was younger so i always kind of looked at him like oh don't ever grow up da, da, da. like it's not about me but now when i listen to the new version i think of myself and all the thing you know my memories when i was younger and literally memories from the original when the original came out and I'm like, man, I didn't even take like this advice. Like I wanted to grow up so badly. And it was right in front of me telling me to cherish those moments. And now that I'm older and I listen to it, I'm like, wait, she was talking to me. Like she wasn't, I, I missed the point. So it's in, it's in a really emotional song for me because it, it, it's like, it really is like, don't grow up too fast. And I, I wish I would have been more present when I was younger and not wanted to grow up so, so quickly and dream about just going to college and growing up and stuff. Not that those are bad things, but I really just spent so much time focused on that. And now that I'm older, I, I wish I would have focused on being younger more because of the freedom that came with it and the, the lack of responsibilities and the lack of anxiety and all the things that come with being younger. So Never Grow Up is just really, really emotional for me and I do tend to cry when I listen to it. Enchanted, this was an original that I really, really liked. I heard it live at Ayers Tour and I think that there's not a huge difference between the original and the mature one. So because there's not much of a difference, I'm really not gonna say much more, like it's great. It's a good song but honestly I didn't notice a huge difference and it's a great song to begin with so you know why why uh touch something that's already great what's what's the saying I don't remember what the the little saying is but you know what I mean Enchanted is already good we don't need to mess with her now this one we need to talk about better than revenge better than revenge I understand why she changed the lyrics. I really do. But I'm also really upset about it. And let me explain why. I was talking to someone about this. And I get why for Taylor's version she would want to not come out with it. Promoting the misogynistic quote unquote lyrics again. However, the way that she felt when she was 18 or 20, like that was raw, authentic, her feelings. And the person that I was talking to about this, we both kind of were talk just talking about our own experiences. And when you're like in high school, I feel like 
everyone at some point is like, ah, like she's so blah blah blah, like she's a little hoe, da 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 da. Like, I'm not saying it's right, but I think that for me, in my experience, and everyone I've grown up with, and all of the girlies have all had a moment where we were like in the into this guy and he went for the girl that was seen as you know like oh she gets around not that that's okay not that it's okay to judge someone based off of their sexual preferences but i'm saying we've all been there and in those times the original better than revenge was there to help us so I'm not like making a stand and saying that those lyrics are correct, that they should be promoted, blah, 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 blah. I'm just saying that that made the song. Like that is what made it the song that it was. And it kind of like, it just, when you were mad and there was that girl that took that guy you wanted and that was like, oh, there's just nothing better than singing that song. But it's okay. Change is good. I like the original better, better, original version better. I also saw on TikTok, and I'm not going to say if this is right or wrong, but I am voicing it for you to form your own opinion. This girl on TikTok made a, a point. She said, is it being misogynistic if you're calling a woman out for her behavior? And I'm just going to leave you with that. Obviously, you probably shouldn't be like, hey, you're a, a little sloot and publicly shame her. But if you are calling someone out for their behavior as another woman, are you being misogynistic when you say, hey, why are you, what's going on, girly? So I'm going to leave you with that thought. I want to know your opinion on the better than revenge lyrics. Maybe you agree. Maybe you disagree with me. Please, please, please DM me and we can talk about it. I'm at that girl the pot on Instagram. Would love your thoughts. Um, keep it respectful though. I'm. I would love to talk to you about it. Hear your point of view. Maybe do a little debating if it's different than mine. But we're gonna keep it cute and keep it respectful because politics. Politics will get you if you're not careful. And this community is a good one. We are all kind, sweet, and opinionated in a cool way. So the next one. The next one is very emotional for me because I've always kind of thought about certain family members I have that are maybe not great. And this song kind of made me look at them and be like, hey, I forgive you. We all make mistakes, but growing from it is what matters. And that is innocent. Innocent is good. It's another one that her mature voice is not super, super different than her original. So it's really not that different. I think they're both good, but that song's gonna make me cry regardless, but it's, it's a very emotional song. The next song, unfortunately, I feel like the original was better because she controlled her voice a little too much. I wish she would have done more of the original where her voice was less controlled. And this is Haunted. I love Haunted. I am a haunted girly. It's one of my favorite songs. I made a friendship bracelet that said haunted. Like, I am a girl. I'm a haunted girl. Girl? Girl? I don't know what I'm talking about at this point. I'm just talking to talk. But, love that song. I wished it would have, her voice would have been a little bit less controlled. You can just totally tell how she's the training she's gone through and you know obviously the vocal coaching and the practice and the tours and the many many albums she has improved vocally since she was 20 so it makes sense that her voice doesn't have the same fluctuations and things like that that it did when speak now came out because you gotta think this was her third album she she said that she wrote it when she was 18 to 20 so this is a very, very, very old album. And the fact that she redid it, obviously there's going to be a lot of differences in the way that she sings it. And I noticed it way more. I think that this album, she did a lot more artistic. She took a lot more artistic liberty. I don't know the word I'm looking for to it. 
where she changed things, tweaked things, played with things, and that's great. It's her album, and I love that, and it paid off in a lot of places, but I wish that, I just wish she would have let loose a little bit more, and her voice would have been less controlled. I don't even know how to explain what I mean by that. I can just hear, like, she's not doing notes as long, or I don't even know how to explain it. I Maybe I'm just being super, super, super critical critical of her but I don't want you to mistake this as me being like negative I just this is what I noticed and I'm gonna be honest about it and regardless she could have put out a video of her just crinkling a garbage bag and I would be like this is gold speak now to this version is still amazing I'm still gonna listen to it over and over nothing is changing in that front last kiss I liked the new version better. I think she did a really good job of evoking emotion in the new version, which is kind of funny because what I said earlier about her being more removed didn't apply to Last Kiss. And thank God, because I love that song. She she also played it a lot. Jeez. She also played it live the other night. RIP, I was supposed to go to that concert before I traded my tickets. Ouch, but it's okay because we got different songs that also were great so <sighs> okay this is another one that felt totally different between original Taylor and new Taylor so mean and never grow up or the other two that really hit um, long live when long live first came out I was transitioning from like elementary school to middle school things were very different and it's funny because when I graduated high school when I graduated college when I did anything that was a milestone long live was a, a song on my playlist. I have playlists for everything, so this is like pretty normal. Um, long live was always there. I never forgot about her. She is a song that I still play quite a bit, which is kind of funny because, you know, Speak Now is an old album. So there are some songs that I hadn't heard in like a year or two when this album came out. And I made sure to listen to the album again before Taylor's version came out and was up to date on everything, especially with the Aero Store coming up. I had to prepare for that. But Long Live is one that I just constantly listen to because it's so good and it feels so relatable to my life and the things that I've been going through within the past couple of years. But original Taylor singing Long Live and grown up Taylor singing Long Live are both equally as emotional because I just think about how original Taylor didn't know about all the things that Taylor is going to accomplish. She didn't know about Air's tour. She didn't know about all the other albums. She didn't know about Taylor's version. She didn't know about any of that. And she was just, she was big, but she was not at the global level that she's at now. And she didn't know that that was going to happen. Like, I'm sure that she manifested it and dreamed about it and hoped that it would happen. But without a doubt, 100% did not know in her wildest dreams, no pun intended, that any of that was going to happen. So it's really emotional for me to think about that and very inspiring for me to think about that because I think about my future and all the things that I didn't know. Because what, she was like 22 maybe when the album came out? Maybe a little bit older or younger? I can't remember off the top of my head. And I'm 24 now. So it kind of makes me really giddy because I don't know all the amazing things that are going to happen in my life yet. Like right now I'm just podcasting because I enjoy it. It's not like I get like a crazy huge paycheck out of it. I definitely don't. I do it because I love you guys. But what if one day it is something like that where it becomes a huge thing like call our daddy or something massive and I just have no idea. Like do you ever think about that? The thing that you're doing and what it could turn into because that's long live and it just makes me so emotional and I'm so proud of her and it's a good time. So I'm gonna clump ours and Superman together because this is getting kind of long. Both are very similar. Now when they first came out I was young. I was listening to these songs and thinking about my little middle school boyfriend that I would hug, hug in the locker room when I left school. Like it's not the same. Now I like live with my boyfriend and we do life together and he goes to work and I go to work and he does his thing and I have my goals and I relate to these songs so much more in a totally different way and hearing adult Taylor sing them honestly was just a good memory like it was like a it was like talking to an old friend having them brought back up like Superman I totally forgot about I listened to ours 
quite a bit, but Superman kind of totally forgot about it. So those two, I just, they, they're a feeling of comfort and I don't know which one I like bat, better, the older or the new. I think that they're equally as good in their own way because of the time that they came out. Like they, they just are apples to oranges. So now we're going to talk about the vault tracks. The first one is Electric Touch. It's not my favorite, but I do like it. None of the vault tracks I don't like. I just, Electric Touch is not my favorite. I do like it though. I think that it's a, it's a vibe. It's very, it's very like dance around the room and I like it. It's just, you know, it has a lot to live up to. Vault tracks are really good. These are, there's are probably my favorite vault tracks. Possibly, I would say. I think red came really close, but I think these are my favorite. So next is when Emma falls in love. One of my really close friends' name is Emma, so I can't help but think of her when I listen to it, but I did love the girl that she portrayed in it, and it's really sweet, and I really wonder what the story behind it is. Maybe she said it somewhere and I just don't know, but I loved the storytelling in it. Um, I can see you. Obviously lots to talk about here. The music video, the song, oh my gosh. Um, I can see you, not my favorite again, but pro I think it's mm, my second favorite, mm, my third, I think. I would have to say my third favorite. It's very, very, it's a vibe. Like it is a vibe. This one's probably a good dancey song. Um, obviously Taylor Lautner. Joey King is also great, but the, I want to know what she's going to do with this song. Like, I want to know what the future of this song is. Is it going to be a single? Maybe she's announced it. I've kind of been out of the loop for a couple days, so sorry if I'm not, like, up to date socially on what's going on. I listened to the album, but I haven't been, like, super, super tapped in to what's going on with social media and what she's announced and things like that, but I can see you obviously a vibe. I love that Taylor came to the Aeros tour, Taylor Lautner and Taylor Lautner. Um, the back flips, I, that was just the closure I needed. I knew he was married and I'm not saying I would want him with Taylor, like, ooh, they should get back together. Obviously none of that, like, I'm glad he's happy, wish him the best. Taylor's obviously happy, but I needed closure in the sense that I do, I was just always curious of, did they ever talk after Back to December? And it's good to know that they're good friends and they have a like playful relationship to the point that they can do a music video and he's all in and he supports her and she supports him. And it was just very sweet and I really enjoyed that. So Castle's Crumbling. Really liked this one. Really liked, I'd say she's probably my fourth favorite. I, I honestly had really high expectations for it because I like Haley Williams so I think it came short of my expectations only because they were so high, which nothing wrong with that. I think I just didn't know what to expect, so I set them too high, but I did really like it. And also it had the issue of the other songs. <laughs> the other songs were really good. So second place, second place for vault tracks is Foolish One. I really did like Foolish One. Oh, 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 I want to go back to I Can See You. I wonder who it's about because she talks about having a professional relationship and like secretly dating and wanting to date. I want to know. But Foolish One, I can see her living out Foolish One in that period. I can see it in my head, like the situation. And I, I just related to it. I've been there and it, I really liked it. Now the last one that is my favorite vault track is Timeless. I wonder if Timeless would be a good wedding song because I thought about making it a wedding song because it is so cute, so sweet, so beautiful, and it's my favorite. And I'm really glad the album ends on Timeless because it ends on such a high note and I just, I really, really do love it. So I don't, I don't even know what else to say. I'm running out of like words. Words are really hard, but... I don't know. I want to know your opinions. So go ahead and comment down below if you're on YouTube. If you're not, like I mentioned, DM me on Instagram, TikTok, at that girl the pod. Ooh. I would love to talk about it more. Um, my alarm just totally threw me off. But 
yeah, all of my links are down below if you want to follow me. Don't forget to follow on whatever platform you're on, whether that's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, whatever. Also, don't forget to leave a rating and a review or give it a like. It takes about mm, half a second and changes my life forever. Every time that you guys leave a review, it boosts the podcast so, so much. And it's free, so you would be helping me out for free, and it takes no time at all. So I really would appreciate it. I think that's pretty much it. I upload every single Wednesday and Sunday, so you can look forward to seeing me again on Wednesday. If you're watching this on a Sunday night, I hope you have a great night. If you're watching this on any other day, I hope you have a great morning, afternoon, or night, depending on what time it is right now. I love you so, so much, and I'll see you in my next podcast episode. Bye, guys. Bye.